you could make a case that seed oils are are not that natural in the sense that like it was very hard technologically to isolate oils from most seeds prior to industrialization but but you know you could eat those seeds and so like the oil that like an extraction is it's that's it's just very unlikely to to get its grass status rejected um because that's for basically anything that that is natural has like automatic grass status that no one would question um but you know you could probably uh you could probably get them on claims that have been made around uh heart disease protection and stuff like that although th that doubt is real a real minefield there's a lot of deserved controversy over seed oils deserving in what way what do you mean well i'll give you an example so uh there are at least two studies showing that if you eat a high pufa which polyunsaturated fat that's the type of a fat that's dominant in seed oils um so if you eat a high seed oil diet for a few weeks you can reverse liver fatty liver disease um i look at that from having studied the physiology and biochemistry of fatty liver disease, knowing a lot about it. Um, the lab that I worked in when I got my PhD actually specialized in fatty liver disease. And so I look at that knowing like pretty much every animal study that was ever done on seed oils versus more saturated and monounsaturated or traditional fats. And what those studies generally show is that, and you, I would, I would frame this as because PUFAs or seed oil fats have toxicity concerns, the body tends to want to get rid of the excess after it uses what it needs. And, and one of the ways that manifests is that in the liver, if you have a lot of PUFAs there, you, you burn them, you burn them away. And, uh, and so what that means is that in a short-term study in humans, you are going to burn the seed oils for energy more quickly than you would burn butter or lard or tallow or coconut oil or cocoa butter for energy because you want to get rid of them. And the way that manifests is that if you're doing ultrasound or MRI on someone's liver, there's less fat over a two week period there. Um, however, because those fats are vulnerable to damaging processes such as oxidative stress and inflammation, then if you look at the harm that fatty liver causes, it probably causes some metabolic harm to have your liver full of fat. But if you're talking about liver damage, you're concerned about the progression from simple fat accumulation, which is called steatosis, to oxidative stress and inflammation, which is called steato steatohepatitis, uh, steato from fat, hepato from liver, and itis from inflammation. And that's what leads you on a path that, can wind up with uh, fibrosis, cirrhosis, and liver failure and death. And the, those animal studies show that you generally get less fat accumulated in the liver when you're feeding seed oils. But once you have that fat in the liver and you have some uh, stimulus for oxidative stress or inflammation, it's the seed oils that make you go down that disease-producing route oxidative stress, inflammation, scar tissue, liver failure. <laughs> so there, you know, the reason there's controversy there is some people say, well, what we should prioritize the human studies over the animal studies. And the two human studies that have been shown show that seed oils reverse fatty liver disease. I say, well, in order to interpret that, you want to look at everything else that's known about how these things affect fatty liver disease you want to look at the animal experiments because in the animals, you can do all sorts of longer term and more invasive investigations that you would not be able to do in humans, or at least no one's done them yet. And you can see that those two human studies showing reversal of the fat accumulation are totally consistent with the animal studies. Those animal studies also show that if you do that long term, you're more likely to die. <laughs> and, um, and so, you know, but, but like if, if you're going to go into a court case, you know, I, I, I personally find my point of view very compelling, but I don't know that I'm going to win a lawsuit over it. Yeah. You know, yeah. because that, because at the end of the day, other people might find it very compelling that like, well, the human studies show it's good for you and, and we're not rats and we're not mice.